Welcome back to part three of this guide to Very Hard and Total Warhammer 2 as Marathi of the Dark Elves. When we left off, we're on turn 11. Um, we've seized control of a few settlements here in uh, the Black Coast, a second province. And we've got our first province mostly under control. We've got some garrison buildings up so that we're not completely defenseless in our uh, first area. We did also make peace with the Beastmen, so that they're not immediately going to attack and destroy our capital, although we won't hesitate to betray them when it becomes necessary, because we're Dark Elves and that's the way we roll. Speaking of diplomacy, there's a few things we can do right now to help secure our position um, against the kind of risks we have. Because if you look, at, of course, at the... Um, <clears throat> sorry. The rebellion situations, obviously... Um, the Black Coast is going to rebel again, and while the Beastmen are raiding us, Iron Peaks is going to rebel as well. This isn't necessarily a bad thing, it gives us more slaves and opportunity for um, leveling up Marathi, but at the same time, um, once we kill the rebellion in Iron Peaks, we should be able to get um, our Cult of Pleasure buildings up, which will stabilize public, public, in order, public income public order, I should say, uh, again. So, also, while our Beastman friends are here, we can level up our sorceress on them. Although I will note that that's like, what is that, five, six agent actions in a row that have failed? Fascinating. Doesn't matter. Back to diplomacy. What we can do, of the Witch King. since Sildra Tor Words is so happy with crucial, us, don't you think? Pick yours carefully. Yes. Choose your words carefully. I most certainly will. Let's go for a trade agreement. Indeed. Grab that. Now they like us more. Grab military access. Maybe we can get a defensive alliance. So what that means is that the High Elves decide to attack us. They may split their efforts off to attack our allies, which would be convenient. Or they might think again about attacking us. Also, since it's a defensive alliance, we won't be lured into uh, joining any war Sildur Tor might start. So... I think that'll work, and they seem to be holding our southern border admirably against the Lizardmen at the moment. So, as ordered. perfect. So that went well, and then we have a strong ally on our southern border that we're getting money from. Meanwhile, Clark Carond, we did inflict a serious defeat Dad, on them. You have precious little time before so I they can... are actually willing to sue for peace, which works for me. Because we have to deal with our Beastmen and Rebellion problem, and if Clark Arond were to come down and try to take back Hag Hall, we would be hard-pressed to defend it. So let's extract some gold from them. We don't want a non-aggression pack, because we plan on attacking them again very soon, because we're assholes. <clears throat> Sorry. We're jerks. But let the gold extraction begin. Perfect. Agreeable. What choice did you have, weak as you are? Quiet. So that takes care of those immediate threats. Also, Felician is pleased. We get a bit of money from our trade agreement that uh, offsets our negative income. And that puts us in a good position, I feel, uh, to end the turn here. Although, as I say, we'll probably lose Bleak Hold Fortress. That's okay, because we'll be able to take it back immediately next turn. And it'll rebel again, but that's just more slaves, right? <laughs> okay. And in the meantime, uh, yes, we'll continue to attempt to steal technology from these jerk boats up here so as to get a continuous slave supply faster. Alright, let's end the turn. Alright, now back at our turn. The beastmen have moved down a bit. They're still raiding us. That's okay. Their time's coming. We'll continue to harass them with our extra cheap agent actions, which will continue to fail spectacularly. Well, maybe you can steal some tech. Hey, look at you go. Well, pop my pupae. I don't know if I'd call her adequate, but she's trying. Um, in any event, we can uh, increase her success chance and reduce her cost with specialist. It's always useful. And then later on, she'll be there to keep our public order in order so that we can continue our conquests uh, unmolested. Now, with Marathi, this rebellion actually didn't attack, which surprises me. But it does conveniently give us the opportunity to murderize them. So let the, the murderization. Yeah. This is pretty much auto calculable. 
I don't see any reason why we would king. need to uh, bother with this one. That gives us a bunch of slaves. Very nice. Slaves. Which, uh, since we set up our slavery so that all our slaves are going to Iron Peak, they'll all go there. And uh, that will set us up admirably us for more gold in the future. Uh, one thing we can also do, since this is coming up, we can dismantle our growth building so that we can start building our Cult of Pleasure buildings, which will get us um, more Chaos Corruption, more happiness, and basically so we don't have to come back constantly and deal with rebellions in this province, in theory. In the meantime, Iron Spike can upgrade to level 3, which is awesome, because then it can get walls and uh, money buildings and various good Cease things. We can upgrade Bleak Hold itself, uh, which will be helpful. Don't overly need this recruitment building here, so we'll get rid of that so we can get something more useful, perhaps. And of course, since we have our right of cane going, our replenishment is quite high. Now, Bleakhold should revolt again next turn, which is just fine with me, since that'll let Marathi destroy that rebellion conveniently before we move over to deal with the rebellion in Iron Peaks right after that. So, yes, thank you, game. There is an imminent rebellion, you're correct. <laughs> and all our diplomacy seems to be proceeding perfectly. We're untrustworthy. <laughs> A pity. <laughs> Alright, let's end the turn and see what happens. Now, on turn 13, the Beastmen have thrown us a bit of an opportunity here. We could, of course, just destroy this um, rebel army and then move on and maybe catch the beastmen later, but then we'd be probably chasing them up north while this city is rebelling. So I think at this point we should probably take advantage of the opportunity they've given us to grab some slaves and post-battle loot that'll get our economy in a, a good state. Also level up Marathi some more. We'll probably be fine on delaying on the rebellions a bit, even if they do um, become big enough to attack. They'll spend a few turns sieging. Marathi should have no problem with that. So let's go ahead and callously betray these jerks because they were fools to trust Dark Elves. <laughs> what? what? And let's go Megazog them. No, this battle being against a bunch of low tier beastmen infantry. Dark Elves are an elite army, so they basically completely outclass this force. Plus, we have magic and a Hydra. So the outcome of this battle is hardly in doubt. Um, so I'm just going to auto-calc this one. Marathi, come on, especially you. considering we Fight. have Dark Conduit. Um, if you do want... And this, also, their entire army is winded because they're raiding. So <laughs> it's fairly um, a walkover. For the Witch King. Perfect. Now that's going to nab us 882 New slaves. Toys. Delightful. New toys. Delightful. Ambition that's rises. what I'm talking about. So, we're not going to be able to catch them. Sorcerers Maybe we can uh, block them with our sorceress. No. That's alright. We can level her up. Make her slightly more likely to succeed next time. Uh, in the meantime, the beastmen should be weak enough now that they won't be able to threaten Hag Hall. And we can head over and deal with the rebellion next turn. And then we can level Marathi up. So we grabbed um, first sorceress there that gets our agents going. I think at this point it's probably safe to grab Root Marcher since plus 10% campaign movement is going to be, always be useful. And now that we're feeling a little bit more confident in her combat abilities and we have some of the critical traits, we can afford to spend a point in it. Uh, then our assassin can level up. Yes. Adequate. Yes. Adequate. Give him Shroud of Darkness, and that's actually going to give a significant Vigor loss reduction to uh, our entire army, which is pretty cool. So they'll tire slower, and we'll have the advantage in prolonged encounters, which we already do with Murderous Prowess, uh, this buff here that I've mentioned before. So that's pretty cool. That said, Nelosi needs to steal technology again. Well, look at that. My first hero success. This one is capable enough. Well done, hero. Uh, I'm going to continue to go into spread public order. Since she'll move Forging back here for at least five turns. 
That'll get our tech moving a bit faster, which is nice. We can get our continuous slave supply in, her, in a hurry. We have an imminent rebellion over Sweet in rebellion Iron Peaks. So since the Sweet Rebellion is coming, we don't need to demand highborn hostages anymore, so we can switch over to growth and slave income. In the meantime, we can use our post-battle loot from the Beastman battle to upgrade the catacombs of Quintex to the vaults of Quintex. And that'll give us significantly more money and uh, less public order problems from lack of corruption. So that's pretty cool. At the same time, uh, we can build walls. Just in case another Beastman faction shows up on our door, we won't have to panic so much. And then we can also build our cultist gathering, which um, should be... Well, we could... Eh, it's not. This one's not that expensive. We'll want to move her back for building the more expensive ones, since she has the trait that makes uh, Cult of Pleasure buildings cheaper. Uh, and speaking of that, we can actually use her trait here. Oh, that's a local region. Hmm. We'll hold off on that one. We can move her back and do it next turn. And that'll work out just fine. If we're lucky, the Beastmen may decide to attack Hag Hall. Oops, we should have no problem defeating them with our garrison, even though it's just five units. Because these units are pretty badly wrecked. And that would be convenient. We could wipe them out in one fell swoop. Uh, also, a thing we'll do, we'll dismantle this other growth building here, now that growth is more under control in the Iron Peaks. And we can start getting more uh, money buildings in place. Alright. One other thing. Uh, you may have noticed in the earlier video, I did mention that uh, Clark Harand has timber that we could use for shades. Of course, Moonshard also has timber that we could use for shades, but I feel like it's better if rather than building that kind of recruitment building here in um, Iron Peaks, if we use its iron from, uh, if you look at Iron Spike, it's got the ability to build an iron smelter once it's level 3, and that will give a significant improvement to uh, a lot of your basic units that we can recruit right here from the Halls of Mustering. And then um, at the same time, we can devote most of this province's infrastructure to making money because we have the bonus from Vaults of Quintex that increase your income from all buildings. So by the time you can afford shades, at this point our money is not really in the shape that we can uh, afford to be thinking about elite units. By the time that happens, we should be able to run over and grab Shadowwood from Clark Harand and then build shade recruitment there. So, just kind of an explanation of the thought process there. I'm going to end the turn, and then we'll see what the Beastmen decide to do. No peace this time? <laughs> Pathetic. Alright, ending the turn. So back here on turn 14, the Beastmen have gone and hidden near Hag Hall, which there's not much we can do overly about that now, um, since we need to deal with this Chaos Rebellion Tooth Suite, since it gets some fairly nasty units like Chaos Knights and such. Um, first, of course, we can blow this uh, army of Bleak Hold Rebels up. Show no mercy. Which, uh, interestingly, the auto calc is greatly against us. Well, not against us, but uh, it's the Hydras, of course. Now, when you're dealing with large monsters, with uh, the best way to kill them is focused fire from missile units. So this battle is not nearly as even as the auto calculator would like to think, because when you focus fire on Hydras with this many crossbows, they're going to melt. As you saw when we saw uh, attack that. Uh, in that siege battle where we were attacking, um, the Hydras are just going to get melted. So, I can uh, show you such a thing. Revenge awaits. Revenge awaits. Now, typically, when you're trying to fire into combats, You'll find you hit your own troops as much as the enemy troops if you're trying to fire overhead, like, uh, and you do don't end up doing very much damage to infantry in combat. It's different with large monsters because um, there's such enormous targets that you can actually fire directly at them with direct line of sight, even if they're in combat, which is pretty cool for uh, completely wrecking them. So. Oh, 
We'll see what happens to this unfortunate Hydra here. Of course, it'll get some breaths off, but we'll do a fair amount of damage. But at the same time, um, when faced with enough firepower, Hydras tend to melt. Poor things. Yes, they are. Let's bring in... Let's show you what this Dark Conduit ability does, by the way. It's pretty cool. So you notice that the enemy infantry here... Watch this. Boom. It basically wipes a whole unit out in close combat. Which is pretty neat, if you ask me. We, of course, have our own Hydra here, so we can uh, cast the breath, so to speak. Keep up our debuffs here. Charge these jerks in the rear with our harpies. In the meantime, this hydra is wrecked. We can destroy the other hydra with concentrated fire from all of our dark shards. Should be no big deal. So shoot the bleak swords here. Some of our spearmen will get wrecked, but that's kind of the spearmen's lot in life, isn't it? <laughs> the terrain's going to help them a bit here, unfortunately, but it is what it is. Yeah, their hydra's not in any good shape right now. And then their uh, cold one chariot we can hunt down with our uh, harpies. Chariots can be obnoxious for infantry armies to deal with, but the missile ones tend to be less scary, since the AI tends to use them very not aggressively and just kind of peppers you from a distance instead of using their nasty charge abilities. Because um, chariots have a lot of mass. And one thing I should mention in this game, damage is not strictly about the stats you see on the screen. So, Dread Spears... Their melee attack and melee defense, since their infantry is fairly indicative of the damage they're going to do along with their weapon strength. But when you look at a Cold One Chariot, the damage that it's going to do on the charge has nothing to do with any of these stats you see here. And the same thing for Hydras and large monsters. Um, it has to do with a hidden stat you won't see on the screen. It's called Mass. And uh, when... A unit is considerably more massive than another unit, so chariots versus infantry. You'll end up doing a lot of extra damage on the charge, just called impact damage, um, which is a little bit uh, unnoticeable with infantry, a little bit more so with cavalry, very noticeable with monsters and uh, chariots and stuff like that. In any event, this Hydra is obnoxiously regenerating and is has a bit of cover here. So I may have been a little bit careless in this battle. <laughs> so be it, right? We have the rear of Cain going on right now, so we can uh, easily replenish our losses. Alright, let's shoot this bugger. Oh, army losses anyway. Doesn't matter. Here, use another dark conduit for no good reason. <laughs> and our murderous prowess won't even get to proc. How about that? That's okay. Well, I guess that's that. I have well, need of that done. We'll grab a few more slaves. We'll get some post-battle loot. We'll get a pigeon plucker I'm pendant. <laughs> Why not, right? It's kind of funny. Reduces enemy flying units melee attack. Hey, why not, right? Uh, that said, that gives Marathi the opportunity to level up again. Um, now, Shroud of Despair is a very nice trait. Uh, enemy leadership minus 10 local region. So, and also, my heroes continually failing will certainly be aided by Insidious. So it's probably not a bad idea to go in and grab Shroud of Despair. It's like, basically as if all your units caused fear, but it also stacks with fear. This is a really actually an amazing talent for getting the enemies to run off the field. Of course, I also want to grab Blessed by Evil. And I also want to grab Arcane Conduit. So we have some difficult choices here, Consider we also want to grab Sulafet. But for now, I think the Shroud of Despair is the most useful thing we could grab. Um, so I'm going to grab that.
Insidious, and then into Shroud of Despair. Observe me. In the meantime, Observe we don't want this glory. rebellion to continue growing. So we'll wipe it out and lose our harpies due to carelessness. New well, toys. that's okay. I am going. Not the end of the world. They were gonna die at some point. <laughs> Alright, and then we can march back in the direction of the Chaos Rebellion, and you'll notice that we're replenishing at a very absurd rate, thanks to our 11 more turns of the Rite of Cain. Um, that gives us a bit more money to play with as well, so one thing we can do is build a slave market here in uh, the Moon Shard, and that'll give us a little bit more income. And then we can move our sorcerers down here. And that will let us uh, save some money on building a uh, cultist gathering. And then we'll move her over here. So next turn we can get a bonus on upgrading our cultist gathering. Apparently rebellion is quite sweet, if you were unaware. And we could build the garrison here in Hag Hall. It depends on how quickly the um, beastmen recover and want to attack us. Because I don't, th I feel like we're probably gonna end up losing Hegel and possibly Vol's Anvil to the Beastmen now. But it is what it is. The slaves and the uh, levels will be worth it. And since they're level, basically level nothing settlements, we're not overly losing a whole lot. So I'm gonna hold off on spending money there now, just because I suspect the Beastmen are going to destroy it. To I and we'll shadows. be back soon enough to deal with that situation. Um, in the meantime. That will end the turn, and we'll go from there. Now on turn 15, let's move Marathi over to deal with this Chaos Rebellion. The Beastmen moved over to Vol's Anvil, so now I'm virtually certain that they're going to take it and raise it, but again, I'm none too worried about that. We should have enough time on the Sacrifice to Cain to um, colonize that and get our army back. We do need to deal, of course, with this Chaotic Rebellion which is annoyingly raiding us. So let's head no over and do that. Me. And then Sabioth is leveled up as well. So we can uh, grab him Bloody Blade, increase his weapon strength a bit further. Is and then we can also Death block this weak. army and surprisingly Disruptive succeed, this one. which means she can improve her spread public order action, which is pretty nice. And then we get a savings on upgrading to a den of indulgence. And then once we get a house of pleasure, we'll be able to recruit death hags, which will also be able to act more cheaply thanks to Marathi's trait. The people grow restless. Bleak Hold Fortress in the meantime. Um, let's see here. We'll probably want to build uh, artisans because our money is getting a little bit low now. Of course, the post battle loot will sustain us, but not forever. <laughs> Uh, in the meantime, this lady will continue to be here improving our public order. We can probably gone. send her just the to go spy on the beastmen. We could also sacrifice some slaves to increase our magic abilities and experience for sorceresses. Which, as nice as that will be, um, I'd like to save the gold for now, just because our finances are not quite stable yet. Once we get these uh, vaults built, we'll be in a little bit of a better place. But until then. So, uh, that's all to do shadows. on this turn, and we can uh, end it there. In a somewhat bemusing twist, the uh, Beastmen have decided not to attack us at all, but to go off into this territory for reasons, and also the um, Forgebound declared war on them. <laughs> Thanks. A uh, slightly more amusing thing, Lothurn, so Tyrion, declared war on Tyrannoch, which is all sorts of fascinating, since that means the High Elves likely won't be uniting and coming after us as early as they did in the other campaigns I've done as this faction. And I'm rather amused also by how successful Sildur Tor has been. So, everything is going according to plan. That said, um, we can spend 130 gold and level our sorceress up here a little bit. That's you. Bewitching fury. Since we have a garrison on our full army, the, this battle is For not in doubt. King. 
Uh, we'll grab some slaves. Which will also, incidentally, level up Marathi again. So now we can grab uh, Shroud of Despair, which, as I say, is a really sweet talent to get. Endless Scheming's nice too. Favorite Assets as well. But uh, Favorite Assets isn't so useful for us because we don't have those elite units yet. So we'll just hold off with Shroud of Despair for now, I think, in that particular part of the tree. In the meantime, that gives us a bit more money from post battle loot. Um, so we can build our iron mining pit, which gives us a bit of money here. And since we have a trade agreement with Soldier Tor, a bit more money from the trade goods. We can march back into um, the Black Coast. And then our public order is looking all right here in uh, Iron Peaks. We just have to survive nine more turns until we can get the right of authority. And that'll stabilize public order for quite some time. Um, so that is looking quite good. In the meantime, two more turns on our steel technology until we'll have to redo that one. To misery. And we'll see what the beastmen want to do here. It's an interesting thing they're doing. Uh, the Black Coast, for now, also seems to be doing alright. We probably don't want to build this uh, Cult of Pleasure building or upgrade it in Bleakhold Fortress until we can get our Sorceress with her sweet trade over there. Malicious. But in the meantime, everything seems quite nice, actually. Uh, in Hag Hall, I would build the Watchtowers, but we do need to get our economy slightly more under control. So for now, since we have uh, Marathi heading back, an Artisan's House will pay for itself in about five turns, and then after that is all profit. So I think I'll go with that, actually, for the moment. Mother of the Drukey. And uh, everything's building over here in Iron Peaks. Everything seems just super. And then, of course, we also get uh, income from ports. Doesn't help us much right now. But casualties captured post-battle certainly does help us. One thing I will mention um, is since Tyrannoch got itself into a war with Lothurn, it might, in this case, be prudent to go down and take Arnheim from them, which is a profitable settlement that also... Um, would let us issue commandments in the Black Coast. In my other campaigns, I've immediately headed north and started pushing into Shadowwood, going after, hoping to get into uh, grab Hag Graef up here, again, very valuable province, and of course grab Nagaron from Malekith, thus wise seize the prize. I watch from the shadows. But yeah, at the moment, I think the situation, if you've done everything to this point and have a similar situation to me, you're in a very favorable position. You've got allies, well, ally. You've Noble got trade. Um, if you're as fantastically lucky as me, the High Elves have managed to war on each other. And then, Be uh, quick. as with the Dark Elves. Dark Lord. And Clark Rond is busy fighting Harganath, which is this faction up here um, in the Fog of War, which is fascinating as well. In any event. Mother of the well, that's just super. Let's end the turn there. So conveniently, uh, that decision's been made for us. Claude Caron just declared war again. That also absolves us of, of needing to uh, take the reliability hit of declaring war on them again. <laughs> so, that works for me. Our wonderful ally Sildrator have joined us. Your I'm time with fairly confident precious, of that battle. So make known your request. Uh, let's see here. They want us to attack the Lizardmen. We would be fools to do so, so we won't. Now then, let's see what the Beastmen do as well. Stonehorn Tribe, what's your plan? Well, they plan to spawn another obnoxious horde and move Don't. north. <laughs> so we've completed our research on continuous slave supply, that's nice. Now we can probably move in and grab battle as business and then driven by vengeance. Battle is business. The extra post-battle loot will help us out here since we're basically getting by on that almost exclusively. Although as our buildings complete, our income's going to slowly start climbing back into the positive. Uh, that said, that's you. Let's move you over here. 
and then grab the cheaper public order building. And then we can move Marathi in here. Now, we kind of want to move up a little bit further, just so that we can move into Venom Glade right away. And then we'll continue with the post-battle loot machine, giving us the income we need to get through. Uh, right. So you are. Now, you'll notice that the sacrifice to Mathland came up. Black arcs count as an extra army, so on our very hard and legendary, they increase your income, your, your upkeep costs rather, by 15% per army. So I wouldn't recommend them this early. When you have a whole bunch of gold later, sure, they let you get a bit of extra recruitment. Since Dark Elves don't have global recruitment, they serve as your global recruitment. They're basically navies from other games. Um, but yeah, I, I wouldn't worry about these early game. They're more of a toy than anything, than something uh, actually practical at this point in the game. Servant of Hecate, that said, Enchantress. let's have you steal technology again. Sweet destruction. Hey, Adequate. success. Yes. <laughs> oh, nice. Uh, means we can increase her specialist, so she costs us very little to do her uh, efforts. We got four more turns of steel technology. That's convenient. I am the first sorceress. So you are, and then we'll move up into Venom Glade soon enough, and continue with our efforts to uh, make a lot of money. That'll let us, of course, upgrade our various buildings in our initial province, and then hopefully, once the vaults of Quintex finish will be in a good position to uh, actually start making some gold. Alright, I believe that's the end of that turn. So now, we conveniently uh, can march in and start obtaining money through battle again, Seven which will certainly help party. our economy issues. We'll move our sorceress back I here. Go. She's got three remaining turns on steel technology. We can probably, well, I don't know if we want to irritate the elves into declaring war on us. But for now, she can spread her uh, public order bonus here at the Black Seize Coast. And then our Navi other sorceress, of course, can move back here and uh, make our buildings cheaper. Servant of Hecate. Conveniently. We are our economy is actually producing a positive <laughs> for once. I am the first Which has uh, not happened in some time, has it? I am that said, Marathi. let us move on and continue our expansion. For glory. Revenge a fairly auto calculable garrison right here. The hag Let's move in and grab ascends. some slaves uh, you with our loot and occupy. Yes, I rather live. suppose it does. By the way, buildings do repair themselves slowly over time, so you don't necessarily have to move in and uh, repair all this stuff immediately. It could actually save you a bit of money if you wait a turn or two. Also, since we have a new province, we'll want to say no more slaves. All the slaves go to Iron Peaks. That's just the way it goes. Which will continue to uh, increase our income more and more over time, as you'll see. That said, we have a bit of money now. Um, the reason why I'm going for this House of Pleasure is so that we can start getting Death Hags. So we'll have another agent type, and Marathi, of course, with her bonus to... Uh, less cost. It, it's awesome to uh, have extra agents around. In addition, death eggs are going to increase the replenishment of your army rapidly, so it'll be like you always have the right of king going. So you can constantly fight battles, constantly be uh, pillaging, and still be ready to continue on without having to stop too much because of uh, attrition. In the meantime, Marathi's leveled up now. As I mentioned, there's a few nice things out there that we kind of want to grab. For now, let's grab Power Drain and then go into Blessed by Evil so that her uh, spell casting is a bit, uh, well, she has a bit more longevity. I find it funny also that uh, Blessed by Evil gives the entire benefit of Earthing and all of this. That's kind of funny. Then after that, we're probably going to move in and grab our King Conduit. At that point, she'll be an extremely effective spellcaster. Once that's done, we can start moving into her Combat Tree so that she can also become an effective fighter. And if you haven't looked at Enchanting Beauty, it's a pretty nice thing as well. We'll also want to raid at some point when it's safe to do so, and finish off our quest for Heartrender and the Dark Sword. Alright. The Sunderer. Other news, Sabioth leveled up. 
who has his uses. Um, Bound by Contract is nice, and so basically never run, since there are some deals that it would be extremely unwise to renege on. That said, uh, we want to get Assassin's Trophy as fast as possible, so he becomes as useful as he can be. In the meantime, Speak. our army sits out here and awaits their coming. We kind of hope that they come over and fight, the since it gives us the opportunity to destroy them. And uh, we'll go from there. Damage building, yes, thank you, game. That building is damaged. That's very helpful. <laughs> All right. Ending the turn. Uh, I, well, actually, before I end it, I should mention a little bit more on commandments again. When this gets dangerous, we can go back to demand highborn hostages. Uh, for now, the growth, I think, is a good thing. Since this is getting to level four here, it's going to be helpful. It'll give us two more building slots that we can work with. Uh, and of course, we also want to upgrade um, Moonshard to level 3, so we can start building more economy buildings there to take advantage of the buff from the vaults of uh, Quintex. Alright. The people are displeased. So they are. Ending the turn now, for real. Now, looking at the situation on this turn, you wouldn't have seen it, but the Beastman moved up ahead of Clark Carond, right about where my cursor is, and hid in their encampment. I feel like we have an opportunity here that uh, the AI has deigned to give us, although seizing it will require us to be bloody, bold, and resolute. So, um, I want this is another shadows. one of those times when you need to be aggressive if you're to uh, gain the advantage and move as quickly as you need to on these harder difficulties. Denied. Clark Harond is in their capital in March stance. So what we could do is march up, waste the beastmen, move up, launch an immediate assault on Clark Harond while they're all tired, and they don't have a huge garrison either. So we should be able, with um, Marathi's magic, to uh, overwhelm them, take the city, and put ourselves in a position where we can take the whole of Shadowwood in a few turns. They won't be able to do anything to stop us. Is it time? So, let us begin. Hag Sorceress. Convenient. Um, so a bunch of basic uh, beastman infantry. Again, easily auto-calcable. Not too worried about this one. And that gives us a whole bunch of slaves again. Deadly. And replenishment. Victorious. I have need of slaves. So that's convenient. Observe. That gives us armor of fortune Observe as well. Um, I'm not sure if we need to give that to Marathi. She already has a decent ward save. This one is capable enough. But we could give it to our assassin, who definitely could use it. Uh, in any event. Hag sorceress of bronze. So that first stage of the plan went extremely well. Unthinkable. I am now, the for a bold move. Let's go attack Clark Arond head on while they're all tired and have that minus 30% debuff. Heart render. Of course, the auto calc says it can't be done. Yet we must find a way. For the Witch King. Yeah, for that guy. So, siege battle again. As before, we've got everything in our groups and ready. Uh, we want to look and see. For the point of least resistance, so this side has more obnoxious towering, this side has less obnoxious towering. Pretty easy decision. Um, we can put our range units in guard mode so they don't wander off into idiocy. And then we're going to shoot the opponents off the walls just like before. As before, we can have a solo single entity units tank the tower fire. We can also see, if we mouse over this tower once it's been controlled, we can see its arc of fire, and thence uh, avoid the worst of it. Now then, here we go. Rapidly get our groups moving up. Okay. Now that arc is right there, so we move in like so. And then our tanking uh, Dread Spears can move up and absorb shots with their shields. 
this unit is annoyingly shooting us. So why don't we throw down a pit of shade so it can't do that. Now Marathi also has an item now, the uh, Guiding Eye, which should let her buff the firepower of nearby Dark Shards. So that's pretty cool. Alright, so we're in position to start shooting. Let's maybe move these guys on an angle so we can shoot those ones better. Let's have Marathi buff all the shooting here. Let's sacrifice the Hydra's hit points a bit so that we can uh, obtain more magic. And as I say, just shoot them off the walls. Let's throw these Dread Spears into combat here so that we can uh, interrupt these Dark Shards from uh, continuing to shoot us, which I uh, don't really want them to do. It's kind of annoying. We've also got enough to throw down another uh, Pit of Shades here. So they can feel our fury. And that'll stop them from continuing to be so rapidly annoying. In the meantime, now that we've kind of got the walls a bit more under control, we can move some of our Dread Spears up and lure them into continuing to fight so we can shoot them to death. And we can also make use of our Dark Conduit ability. This nasty little surprise we've got for them. Move our Hydra up as well, and then uh, they'll be more capable of breaking down the gate once the timing is propitious. This seems to be going quite well. They're getting shot off here. And a lot of their armies, I say, is very tired from their uh, forced march of stance that they were in for some reason, which we so rapidly capitalize on and punish them for. And they can feel our vengeance. Of course, our Dread Spears will be tired moving up like this, so... We're going to probably lose a few units of them, that's okay. We can build a basic recruitment building and grab a few more Dread Spears anytime we need. That's no big deal. Okay, so this is a little bit annoying. So we can send Marathi over hopefully to deal with that garbage. Alright. That'll help out quite a bit. Of course, the gates are sitting open right now for some reason, but I don't really want to send my Hydra in to get murdered. So maybe let's not do that. <laughs> Alright. Ideally, we'd shoot the fresh units over the tired ones as well. This unit of Dark Spears is screwed. But it does make a nice thing for us to perhaps use our Dark Conduit on. Well, not really a whole lot attacking it yet. Maybe there's a better opportunity here. We'll see. Wait and see how that goes, for now. Look out! Enemy One of these Dark Shards? Well, we could do that. Beware! Enemy nah, let's save it for a more opportune moment. Alright, so we've got control of the walls here now. We're not even being towered, which is kind of nice. Let's sacrifice the HP of some of our Dark Shards, get some more mana back. Okay. That seems to be going pretty well on the whole. Let's hold our fire now for a little bit here and conserve our ammo. Battle ready. Now then, let's continue to move over and try to take the walls. They're getting that tower back annoyingly, but that's okay. Move in and fight them here. I'd really rather you guys didn't go up there. Oops. Yeah, fight that garbage, please. We're already tired, so let's use it here. Blow this unit up. Boom! That'll basically wipe that unit out by itself, conveniently. Alright, we can throw out another pit of shades here, if we can find a good target for it. Eh, here comes some dark shards, actually. Are they going to stop moving and actually shoot? Yes, they are. So let's throw down a pit of shades on them and ruin their day. <laughs> 
perfect. Let's get these melee units up the walls as well. Bloody murder. Uh, I like you guy. Alright, let's shoot these guys off the walls with a few units at least. Looks like murderous prowess is procced for their side, which means ours can't be far behind. We'll also throw out another power of darkness and get our mana back. There goes murderous prowess for our side. Alright, well we should probably make use of our shots while we have the buff. Fire away. Perfect. I can have uh, Marathi move over and buff some of these units too. And that'll get them all the way up to 31 missile damage, which is pretty nice. In the meantime, have Marathi continue to obnoxious them. Let's see, are there any fresh units here we can hit? Because hitting the uh, tired units isn't overly useful, is it? Well, let's just knock out another unit of their rich missile units, which is kind of the more threatening stuff here. Kane's always thirsty. Someone should get that man a drink. Well, that seems to be going pretty well for us. Nice, nice, nice. Very good. Alright, hide your thing. Can you breathe on this? That'd be nice. Oh. Closed it just in time, huh? That's funny. Alright, Hydra, beat down the gate, please. This seems to all be going quite well for us. Very good. Maybe have a few units conserve their ammo, though. Okay, we've got Dark Conduit coming up as well. That'll be nice. Let's dock down this gate. We're almost got down to even numbers now, which is nice. Our power reserve is running out, though. But that was expected. They love opening and closing this gate. Fascinating. Well, see so if you can get a breath off, I guess. Ooh, you can. Ho 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 ho! 104 kills. Ho ho ho. A thing of beauty. Hey, uh, assassin man. You're good against gates, apparently. Why don't you go break that gate down, too? Oh, I see. They're streaming out because they're broken. Well, isn't that nice? Marathi. So you are. My fury. Time. We do seem to have the walls mostly under control here, which is nice. Except for this unit. Well, that's okay. Now, let's see. If we use our Dark Conduit on our Hydra here. Boom, that should wipe out a few units, actually. And rapidly reduce their count of soldiers. Cool. Of yeah, sure, if you say so. Uh, let's see if we can wear down this handbow unit, because they're going to be annoying to deal with. Oh, our Hydra is going to get itself in difficulty here when it's being shot. That's okay, though. Let's take these three units of Dark Shards and head up the ladders so that we can start raining down shots from the walls. Meanwhile, if they're just going to hit it here, why don't we just have Marathi kill them? She's not that bad at combat. Well, she'll get much better, but there it is. Hey, Assassin, man, what you doing? Get back here. <laughs> Hydra's having just a good time. Boom. Use your mass to your advantage. That's the way to do it, eh? Okay. Although we're rapidly running out of magic to influence the battle with, sadly. If we can get our assassin into combat with their lord, that should fairly rapidly decide the issue. Okay. Alright, but... This is going to be a bit difficult for them, isn't it? That's all right. Let's throw out that. Let's have him attack the gates again. Looks like our Hydra is fighting their lord. Oops. 
Well, that was probably a mistake to throw the Dark Shards at this one. Since they're actually counter-attacking somewhat determinedly. That's alright, though. Let's move you guys back this way. Okay. How's that gate going? Almost got it done. Although, they keep opening it to stop us from <laughs> doing anything useful with it. It's kind of funny. Alright, Marathi. There go the gates. Perfect. Now you, Mr. K Knight Assassin, let's get you in there and kill their lord, please. And then let's throw the Hydra away somewhere else. Let's activate your Dark Venom. And that'll increase your weapon damage to 627 for a bit. So we should be able to do some serious damage to her if we can actually connect. In theory. Of course, you'd have to actually connect for it to be a thing, wouldn't you? Any other important battles going on here? Okay. Blackout Corsairs. Bleed them. Let's have an explosion here, shall we? There we go, look at all those deaths. Only 534 of the enemy left. Did you manage to do anything? Hey, he killed the enemy lord. Now get out of there. You did your job, assassin. I'm proud of you. Army losses, that's gonna be the end of the battle right there. And now since they're defending a city, they'll lose their entire army. So I feel that we can justifiably call that a coup. A great success. Very good then. I shall name this replay Thing. Excellent. So that leaves uh, Clark Harand in a dire situation. We lost a single unit of Dread Spears. That's fine with me. And we'll rapidly replenish the rest of them. Uh, Marathi and our assassin and our Hydra, everyone performed quite well on the whole. And that also means we can loot and occupy and gain a huge amount of slaves, seized it all. which we shall send to uh, the ancient city of Quintex, which now means we have a 60% income increase from slaves, which is on top of our 80% income increase from the vaults of Quintex next turn. On the whole, Everything can justifiably be called awesome. And then we'll use that money to upgrade our most important province. We'll get walls at Iron Spike, just in case the unthinkable occurs. Uh, since this is at minus seven public order now, I'm going to switch back over to demand highborn hostages. Since uh, military crackdown will end soon enough. But we should lose a little bit of the uh, public order edge from the finishing of our House of Pleasure and the uh, vaults themselves. Now our income's starting to look a little bit less dire. And uh, these areas will start repairing themselves. Rebellion at this point is almost helpful to us since it just gives us more post battle loot to work with. Uh, Marathi's leveled up, which means she can be blessed by evil now, which will improve her spell casting again. And then we can finish off her spell casting, going through Soul Stealer, Spiteful Conjuration, Smoke and Mirrors, and Arcane Conduit. The second level of Pit of Shades is currently bugged. It actually removes your ability to overcast Pit of Shades. So until they fix that, I wouldn't recommend grabbing that second point. Although they'll probably fix it in the Mortal Empires patch in a few days. That said, um, the Beastmen are probably going to leg it. Time to leg it! If we leg it, we can fight again another day. There's destruction everywhere. This province is going to rebel. But that's okay. Because we've mainly eliminated our primary threats here, haven't we? If you look at uh, the situation in the whole. Now we're able to just move over and grab um, Daldrak's Lair. We can grab Circle of Destruction. At some point, Hag Grafe, I guess, got raised by Beastmen somehow? fascinating. We'll want this city too, because it has a sweet mine that gives a huge amount of gold. And once we've filled up the ancient city of Quintex with slaves, that's where we'll want to send our slaves next, I suspect. Alright, so. Uh, everything is in a very good position now. And if you can get to this point in your campaign, well, by turn 19, 
this is a highly favorable position and you're in a good position to do whatever you want be that as I would suggest uh, striking against Malekith and taking over Nagarond and the altar of ultimate darkness of course you have the other option of going east over to Ulthuan and pillaging and burning those lands it's a bit of a riskier strategy as I say Malekith's lands are extraordinarily rich so I would recommend going north at this point and grabbing as much of that as you can in any event, uh, I believe that's quite enough for this turn. Wouldn't you agree? Speak. Quiet. Although one other thing we might do before we end the turn Never is uh, block this beastman army from escaping Let so that we can suck. absorb its uh, post-battle loot. They and also they praise they Kane. Because Kane's a pretty cool guy. Or so I am reliably informed. Uh, in the meantime, we can start leveling up this sorceress's uh, actual battle abilities because at some point we're going to want to put these sorceresses into armies so that they can aid our uh, second and third armies when they eventually come which they will if you notice our income is actually back into the positive and rapidly going up and as we get more uh, slavery buildings here you'll see that continue to increase for example um, once city of quintex gets to level four you can build an upgraded slave market there That'll reduce the slave public order penalty, which is fairly significant right now for uh, Quintex, as I mentioned. So, that is the downside to slaves, but it's not too Corruption bad a downside when you consider the sword. very excessive income increases you can get, as More you'll, happy. I'm sure, see in the days to come. So, let's end that turn. Not too worried about that rebellion, of course. We'll have to go back and deal with the rebellion here, too. But that's okay. Not the end of the world. Since, uh, in the meantime, we can go and grab a uh, sweet territory like Daldrax there, and the Circle of Destruction. So the Beastmen have sent off a horde to the west to make their daring escape that will no doubt arrive later to annoy us. And Kla Karant has gone and obtained these um, not-so-ideal territories which uh, they do actually affect the AI. You'll notice buildings minus two, that's the penalty to public order from unpleasant climate, which I'm willing to let them have. None too worried about that. You'll notice our income has gone up to 2300 per turn now that we have uh, the vaults of Quintex built. So our economy is rolling. This one is capable enough. Our capable enough assassin is also leveled. And we can get him Counter-Strike and then Assassin's our Trophy. The and we can go and grab uh, Daldrax Lair from these jerks, and then move back in time to deal with the rebellion, hopefully. Heart render. In the meantime, the beastman tribe that's in our way will get wrecked and become Power our slaves, which is pretty cool. We'll get a Tome of uh, Furion, which beats the Trickster Shard, since it's a free cast of Doombolt, which, although not an amazing spell, is nice to Anarian's have. Bride. Then, so we can level up Marathi again. We can move on towards um, obtaining Arcane Conduit. Soul Stealer is not a bad spell, uh, especially if you have a bunch of lords grouped up. It's basically AoE Spirit Leech that heals you a bit. Spirit Leech being the single target nuke from the Lore of Death. So it's not a bad thing to have. Spiteful Conjuration is not bad too. Neither is Smoke of Mirrors. Neither of them are overly game breaking though. Um, but Arcane Conduit is really nice, just as far as increasing the amount of mana you have available as much as possible. In any event. We'll continue our feel romp, in which the they will feel slaughter. our rage. And we'll loot and occupy you them and continue to dare. increase Ambition our slave rises. count. Which is pretty Do sweet. <clears throat> Speak. And that levels Marathi up again, as I mentioned, moving further into these magic traits. Uh, after which we can consider our options. One thing I should mention, though, about Insidious, it does... I should have mentioned this before. It does lock out Tenacious, and there are some nice things here. Extra slaves, extra income, uh, ward save for your army, casualty replenishment. Although you don't really need that once you get a hag, a death hag in your army. Uh, grotesque sacrifices, that's a lot more chaos corruption that can help your public order a little bit and also work on it, causing attrition in enemy armies, but it's nothing major. Absolute devotion's nice, since you get 30% upkeep reduction for your army, but it's only one army. So I feel like um, the bonuses from the Insidious line outweigh it, especially in that that minus 10 leadership is enormous. Favorite assets is enormous for making a, a unique quick striking 
Marathi specific army and also getting additional campaign movement for all your forces is pretty sweet too. So, just my Ricky thoughts on Queen. building Marathi. Um, in any event. There's destruction everywhere. So there is, but luckily you're repairing it slowly over time. And we have a rebellion next turn, we can go back and myrtleize. Five more turns is all we have to hold out in order to get our right of authority in place as well, in which case our public order problems will be oh so temporarily solved. Um, one prudent plan is also to get it Vol's Anvil leveled up and start getting defenses in place so you can get that sweet minus 10% upkeep to all your forces ability. Uh, in the meantime, slaves are just making this place quite angry, but it is what it is. That'll be slightly ameliorated by the completion of the uh, House of Pleasure. And uh, hopefully, we'll be able to get Marathi back in time as she stomps a rebellion here, stomps a rebellion here, and then stomps a rebellion here. <laughs> rebellion stomping at this point will be the name of the game. But considering our greatly uh, improved strategic position, I'm none too worried about it. So. And also, uh, Quintex's garrison is actually pretty scary now. So we don't necessarily have to worry about it immediately falling, even if the rebels do decide to launch an assault. So, with that situation, all these happy things to contemplate now that we've managed our decisive strike. As I tell you, it's about calculated aggression, knowing what your armies can do, and uh, taking advantage of the opportunities the AI offers you in general. So, I believe in this much more favorable position, I will leave this episode off. Uh, if you've gotten yourself anywhere near this, and if you were lucky enough to have the High Elves do what they did here, you're pretty much set. I mean, you can start building up these provinces, your income is significant, you can probably force Clark to make patience. peace. Yeah, easy. And, uh, as I say, <laughs> everything can justifiably be called awesome. So. Very good.